Hi, I'm Ted Bear, and today I'm going into the metaverse to see what I can eat and survive off of for seven whole days. So far, Meta has only provided me with a location to go to see concerts and some sort of odd user-generated multiplex of oddities. I don't know if I'll find sustenance, but we're gonna go in and find out. Try to keep up. Hello, and welcome to Head Mounted Destinations. This is a podcast about VR and VR game development. We provide our perspective as game developers and provide a peek behind the curtain into how VR games are made. I'm Matt. I'm a gameplay programmer. And I'm Carlos. I'm a level designer. And today we're diving into Horizon Venues, which is one of the building blocks of the company previously known as Facebook's The Metaverse, which is their next bid to, you know, stay in business and and not go bankrupt. So the Metaverse is theoretically supposed to be a place where we engage in like all aspects of life, but through this like new digital platform. And today we're going to cover the entertainment side of it, mostly like, I guess, like live shows, that type of thing, performances. Right now, it comes down to three or four apps, however you want to cut it. There's Horizon Worlds, which is about socializing and exploring user-generated content and different experiences. There's Horizon Venues, which is about attending streamed live events, uh, you know, movies, concerts, that kind of thing, uh, with other people around. And there's Horizon Workrooms, which is a more business-focused, you know, you can have meetings in VR and, and do whiteboards and and all that stuff. And then there, there's Horizon Home, which is going to be rolled out. And it's like a home environment where you can invite people and, and hang out in a more like casual, chill, private, personal space. We're looking at Horizon Venues today. And boy, do we have some things to say. It has two stars, two out of five stars on the Oculus Store. It's got a fair number of reviews, and those reviews all average out to, yep, about two stars or something like that. And at the current time, that does make sense. Yes, that is perhaps a bit high. No, I won't be that ungracious. It's, it's, <laughs> it's pretty fair, though. Not only is it like a f potentially flawed concept and lacks much compelling content, but it's also not very well made just as a piece of software. The user experience, at the very least, needs a lot of work, but let's get into maybe why the core fundamental concept might be off, or at least not presented in the best light. Horizon Venues is this, at least user-facing-wise, how they advertise it and how they want to advertise the endgame of it is, this is a place where you and your friends will go to meet up in like I, either mixed reality or purely in virtual reality, but you'll all meet up to go and see the Foo Fighters or a space exploration thing or maybe some sort of weird metaversal concert, something like that. And that sounds awesome. And at least for me, it builds the expectation that I am going to see a performance in VR. That's actually going to be really cool, and it'll utilize the VR space for its advantages. And what we get is actually something closer to, like, the app Big Screen or any other general movie theater app. It doesn't feel like a performance in VR, even for the ones that are kind of performances. For instance... We went to the Kazuna AI concert, which like Kazuna AI is a VTuber, meaning they are a digital character YouTuber in the virtual world. You know, they exist solely in digital reality. And yet her concert was being played on a flat IMAX screen in VR. Yeah, we already have that with apps like Big Screen and, and other video players. And like, I don't need to travel somewhere in order to view what is effectively at this point just a stereoscopic 180 video, right? That's already a thing that exists. I don't need a, a metaversal destination for this. If I'm going to go somewhere and, and be there with strangers or with my friends and make it a whole thing, it should be something more than that, right? It should be a concert in VR where the it's like an actual digitalized performer in front of me with like crazy effects that I couldn't experience in real life. 
right now it pretty much just boils down to I'm viewing 2D content on a giant screen. It might be stereoscopic, but stereoscopic video is a far cry from what it's actually like to view like a fully 3D VR experience. Absolutely. And to pull a comparison into play for like VR performances, I'd say you'd most likely get a better VR performance from, let's say, a dancing troupe of like two or three people in VR chat with full body motion tracking. Like yeah. you, you'd get a better show from those people in like a random lobby, just practicing their dance routines and stuff like that. than you would going to see Kazuna AI and horizon venues. You'd expect this to be a, a VR performance, but instead it's on a big IMAX screen inside of VR, which is, it's so weird. I mean, that's, that's so weird for like a bunch of reasons, right? I mean, so like, many layers to why that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like they're a virtual character. It should be the most easy thing to, to actually like import. Yeah, there should be a static mesh stage. Like there should be just like, here, I made the stage in Unreal. Okay, I exported it. Here's her animation or her motion capture data for the entire like concert performance. And we already have the audio recorded. Let's like just hit play on all three at once and put them in an actual physical place. And that mm -hmm. the fact that it's not that is just baffling. And the fact that you can get that in VR chat with actual real live people, not just animations playing out is even more so like, what is going on Facebook? Like you guys have the money. Like yeah. I, I just don't see it. Like is the, is the passion not there? Is the vision not there? Is it, are they like, Oh, that's something that'll come down the road, but they're just like not saying it to address that. This whole app just reeks of like not, having a strong driving vision and sort of being assembled Frankenstein style by like corporate overlords. You know, it's like, oh, we've got the the department that's in charge of going and getting new content and they're signing contracts and they got the Foo Fighters. All right. And then there's the team like making the core tech of the app of like you can move around and join these lobbies. And then there's the team, if it even exists, of like integrating the things that we got contracts for into this VR space. Like, how do we do that? Right. And right. maybe that team doesn't even like, they don't have a roadmap or they don't have the funding. They don't know the tech that's going on with the other team. So they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's actually just get like six video cameras, put it around the Foo Fighters. Oh, it's totally okay if you put it like four to five feet away from them. And then they're not talking to the tech team. So when you go to watch the Foo Fighters in venues, now it looks like it has some depth. It's a 180 stereoscopic, you know, video, but the Foo Fighters are the size of giants or titans in an anime. Like, right you're you're watching these real people perform but it's utilizing i'm using air quotes when i say that utilizing vr in the sense of like oh you can't actually ever see the foo fighters this big because they wouldn't be that big <laughs> and it's like they're not even in the game dog you just it's so obvious that like i'm staring at a screen like it's yeah i'm staring at a screen within a screen like you're making me Dude, meta yeah. think about what the fuck i'm doing in real life <laughs> just delivering stereoscopic video like that you know like People appearing huge in, in stereoscopic video is like a well-known thing. And it's just like, that's not even the minimum viable product in my mind. That's like sub MVP of like what this should be delivering. You know, and it's like going back to the, the VTuber concert thing. Like another reason that that's baffling is we're seeing more and more with like a concert design and, and these sort of like production design thing. Like people are using Unreal and other real time software to like design, oh, what is the concert going to look like in terms of all the lights and stuff going on? Mm -hmm. And so like if you're already doing that level of design where it's like, I want to be able to pre-visualize this crazy stuff. Why not just make it even crazier and like directly import that into, into VR? Now I can have like crazy laser sweeps and, and like particle effects and all this stuff going on right in front of me. Like we already have the data potentially. We don't need to do extra work to like transcode a real life video into a virtual thing. Like we, it's already virtual and it's being made real through software. I have not been to many a concerts. I would say I've been to very few concerts, but the ones who 
really push it over the top like that put on an actual big stage show those are going to be far more engaging than whatever you find in the current venues or metaverse whatever you want to call it there could potentially be audience participation which is entirely missing from venues there Mm -hmm. are big visualistic spectacles which aren't happening here like more and more as we're talking about this like my inner like concert goer whatever you want to call it my inner concert animal is like just screaming for like a baby metal kazuna ai crossover concert where i see them doing rock and and k-pop or j-pop and seeing like a fucking dragon and a giant fox god fight in the like sky above us you know (laughs) as the music is happening and their fighting is going along with the music and maybe at some point we all get like magical wands and we can expecto patronum to fight the fucking dragon away so the fox god prevails there's that that there's just like shit that like happens at real life concerts which isn't like oh i'm fighting a big giant dragon at the alice cooper concert but it's absolutely like you know someone's throwing a fucking drumstick into the crowd maybe like water bottles are being thrown out into the crowd by the by the band or things are getting thrown up onto the stage and the band is like fucking smacking them back with their instruments like (laughs) like it doesn't have to be punk rock shit like that but there's just that whole layer missing like i guess it just feels like a a way more at least for now sanitized like concert experience and it's not even really a concert experience like it feels like there's sanitation happening to the raw performance itself as well as the the attendees of that performance this is something we bring up repeatedly on this show but like vr okay it it's high friction And like, especially if you're talking about like a concert environment, you are losing things, right? Like you don't get like, oh, the press of the crowd, the like heat, the the like energy that just ripples across a crowd. You don't have the loud music that you can like feel in your chest, right? That stuff is absent and you're never going to have that because of the limitations of VR. So you have to make up for it with other aspects that are over the top and, and are hyper, right? Something that you know, is hyper real. It can't be experienced in real life. You have to be in VR to, to experience it. And nothing about venues matches that, right? Like you don't have the crazy shit that makes up for it being a subpar regular concert experience. Yeah. And the goal here is not to perfectly recreate the real concert experience. I think if you're looking through that lens, you're going to fail. Like you're just starting yeah. off on a failing foot because you're in VR. You're not in real life. VR cannot perfectly recreate real life, and it won't be able to for a very long time. But why would we want it to when we could do things that are so much more interesting than just what's possible in real life? Now, let's contrast that a little bit with the NBA courtside thing, because that's actually a case of it going the other direction, where like maybe if you're thinking about it in, in some mindset, the idea of like, okay, cool, like, you're, you get to watch an NBA game courtside, right? Courtside view, stereoscopic, 180 video. Like, it's going to be, like, as immersive as possible. This one felt the best. Yes. Just right out the gate, this one felt the best. Because, like, everything sort of felt scaled right. If if things did feel a little bit bigger, it was understandable because you could sort of tell, oh, okay, I am, like, seat level with the court yada yada like nobody put the camera on a mannequin dummy and then put the camera by its head which Mm -hmm. like i think that should be a thing in the future so we're actually like at head level with everybody to the left and right of us but the scale and the experience felt good up until a sudden point which just for me like immediately broke a rule of vr and it created that moment that you alluded to earlier where one team implemented something and another team wasn't like talking with that team when they implemented their thing and so this moment when one team pushed up to a hoop and i think somebody was going for a slam dunk the camera that was being projected onto the massive screen to everyone suddenly switched from courtside to being a camera stuck onto the like support post of one of the hoops and that to me just like pulled me out of the experience 
I understand it from a general broadcasting point of view, like why they do that in NBA broadcast. But for a VR broadcast, it just seemed very like jarring to transition the point of view of the players, quote unquote, being the audience. Yeah. Well, there's two interesting things there, right? One is that, like, yeah, it's it's directly translating a an aspect of flat broadcasting, which is like, yeah, we switch to the camera angle that best presents the action. Yes. Like, of course, that makes sense. And so you've got whatever, you know, production team is on the ground there, probably associated with NBA, setting up these these cameras and the system of, like, switching between the views. And it's like, oh, this is going to be, like, really cool and immersive. And, like, they don't know about vr experience design at all they're just doing that no one's telling them best practices and the other interesting thing is like what we were just saying about like hyper experiences and like better than real life you might think like oh yeah like it's like being courtside but also you get a close-up on the action when it goes to one side of the stadium or, or the other like that's better than real life but it ends up like not being the case right it's jarring and, and disconcerting like i want to if I go to an NBA game courtside in venues, I just want to be able to sit courtside like I'm actually courtside and experience the game like that. Maybe with an option to have like overhead shots or, or select my viewpoint right from a map at my own leisure, but not get forced into these camera cuts. So that's like an interesting thing of like you actually have to get into how the experience design of the, the VR experience works and and what's going to feel best you can't just like have a bunch of people all operating independently doing what they think might work yeah and with a lot of this feedback i think it largely boils down to needing more concrete direction for the experience as a whole like you know how there's usually like a creative director or a game director that is like I understand without a shadow of a doubt what the end product of this concept should look like. And I am going to make sure every decision like feeds to that end goal. And with this, it does not feel like that's the case just with everything we're talking about. Like if we were looking at this from a like, oh, we're going to make NBA courtside, but for VR, I would immediately go to think of okay, well, obviously let's do like a, a court side seat, like from the side of the court, but people obviously want to see like the, the hoop area when it comes to our people about to score a goal, do a dunk, something like that. And at least first draft, I would imagine like, oh, the player should be able to like pop up this like small handheld 3D representation of the entire court, right? And be able to pick a couple of like authored locations that they could teleport between in case they want like a better view, right? And so yeah. from there, now the player is dictating their motion. You're not transporting them to some other part of the court just because the basketball is over there. They're saying, no, 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 like the action's going on here. Let me bring up, let me bring up my iPad or look at my map that's always next to me and then tap and then boom, like now you're over by the thing. It sounds like they tried to use the general broadcasting, like flat screen, uh, thinking to address a problem that isn't necessarily there for VR. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like people are okay, or at least in VR would be okay with just being at their courtside seat and then seeing, you know, the dudes run to the one side or the other, and then seeing the play happen from there. Cause that's part of being in a physical space, having to actually like choose yep. to move to a different section of the arena. And so just pulling that away from them, you're removing player agency, or in this case, user agency. And removing user agency is like the fastest way to pull immersion and to some extent fun from any user. Yeah. Continuing on that concept of this app needs a strong driving vision, someone to come in and, and fix it up. Like what we've been talking about is how the concept's sort of flawed or, or at least like the current content execution is, is not yeah. compelling at all. But the criticisms we just made would be true even if the rest of the app was like solid and well-made, but the rest of the app is not solid and well-made. It's the opposite of that. So I think it's it's worth talking about like just how it delivers like a poor player experience even from the start. Yeah. You know, personally, my experience was I loaded into the game, 
and it sort of sends you through a tutorial the first time you load in. You load into a personal room space, you know, where you can like sort of get ready and edit your avatar. The initial tutorial sort of walked me through is like, here's how you move here, you know, go over here and edit your avatar. And I like teleported over before hitting next on the card and I got soft locked into the tutorial where I couldn't edit my avatar and I couldn't teleport back to hit next on the <laughs> on the tutorial card. It was like, okay, this is like, this should be a lot more solid if it's not even saying it's in beta, right? They just released yeah. the app. And, you know, talking about the, the avatar system, I, I guess we can get into that because we have a lot to say about that. Yes, big time. Going into this, you go up to a mirror that is not a mirror immediately. There's a little edit avatar button. You hit edit avatar and it kicks you out of the app. Yeah, I thought my game crashed. I thought Horizon Venues crashed like when it had me edit the avatar. I was expecting like the mirror would become a mirror. I would see like a bunch of options to the right of the mirror and be live changing what my avatar looks like. But instead, it kicked me out to Oculus Home while keeping Horizon Venues playing in the background to then give me exactly what I described. The mirror, the options to the right of the mirror, some extra little options to the left of the mirror... All of that just should have been in venues. And I'm guessing yeah. that whatever Horizon Home is or, you know, their idea of the metaverse, I'm guessing that like all of that customization stuff will still just exist in the home environment of it. And these apps will just be made in a way where like going back to the home to tweak your character will become like a more natural thing. But at the current point in time, it feels super jarring and, and it absolutely like my game broke. Like I didn't know it didn't break until I finished my avatar and it pulled me back into the game. Right. And you don't necessarily have to, you know, to solve this, you wouldn't have to embed the avatar editing UI into Horizon Venues either. I think you just have to make it look less like a VR avatar preparation area in the actual app. Just make it an abstract button or something that's like, oh, your avatar isn't set up. And you click that and you go to a, to a separate avatar creation screen. I mean, maybe you could embed it. That would be really cool. But I don't think you have to. It's just like a there's a mismatch there where someone wasn't thinking like, oh, it's going to take you out to this global system level, like create your avatar menu. We shouldn't make it look like you're going to be editing your avatar in the app. But even then, there are issues with the avatar creation menu right now. The first yeah. being it's not a it doesn't have a mirror. It's just a static image of your avatar and you can't even like rotate it, you know, its orientation. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I was so frustrated by that. I was like, I'm trying out these, like, I'm trying out this, that, and the third. I, I want to see hairstyles from every angle. Like, we see it in all the commercials too, right? Like, we see it on these freaking like corpo art style fucking like little Twitter videos that Facebook and co be posting where it's like, oh, I put on my headset and now I'm in front of this mirror and look I'm lifting my arms and I see my character lifting their arms and I can see like every angle of the blouse I'm wearing and damn I look good and now I'm gonna walk away and leave the mirror and we don't have that here it's actively being advertised in 2020 2021 2022 we don't have that shit right now even now current day March of 2022 which is baffling because every other basically every other VR app with avatar customization like that already a does live mirror, yeah yeah it's like it's so backwards it's amazing like it's it's truly amazing that they could create this advertise it as like being what is at this point a standard vr experience and then like flub it and it's just much much worse and the live mirrors work like once you get yeah. out of the avatar customization you're immediately back in venues or worlds standing in front of a live mirror and it's like why why wasn't this live when I just jumped to the creation system? That's what yeah. makes it all the more frustrating. It's like, you know, it's fucking there. You see it before and you see it after. So, you know, just another in a long string of like, this software is not ready for the public release that it's getting. Like, it should not have been rolled out at the current state of completion. But even, even then, the avatar system as it stands right now is displeasing to me. You know, going back to your point about things feeling sanitized, 
this is another key example. Are you talking about like the style of the avatars and the cosmetic options or like the number of those? Because I have problems with both. Everything. Okay, I I'm gonna I'm gonna like Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes break this down a little bit. All right, <laughs> like <laughs> like face horizon horizon customization menu is coming at me to punch me and time is slowing down and I'm about to like identify <laughs> its kidney, its rib, and its nose. So pretty much we have this avatar creation system which is more or less the Wii me maker, right? The little dudes that you make on the me, which was a great system. It seemed really simple, but people could make a lot of surprisingly complex characters out of it, like Zoidberg from Futurama, Bender from Futurama, maybe even like Master Chief and like other people. But with this avatar system, one, the options, there are surprisingly few options, uh, like, you know, the options for eye colors, options for, uh, hair colors. There are all these like preset colors that, uh, that are like five or six colors. There's no option to go on like the big 255 pixel scale of like a color wheel or whatever, uh, which like so many games, you know, I, we, we like Elden Ring just came out recently. And as far back as the first Dark Souls game, we had the big square of like here's like white to black purest red purest like bright red to purest dark red and then like dragging the color bar to get different colors we've had that for years yeah. if not this decades. is not cutting it and we don't not have it here edge. we have less options than what came on the fucking nintendo wii like we yeah. have less options than that and then so we can't make cool funny creatures like i can't make my skin like demon red or i can't be like dr manhattan blue i i don't have funny little decals that i could like put on me and move around it's sanitized in the sense that it has to be as human as possible while also the aesthetic style itself i don't typically like to poop on you know people's art styles or whatever but the forcing to have to look as much as a real person as possible while the art style itself being like this sort of not even like goofy like it's goofy but go goofy has more personality to it like this art style does not have personality to it it's a very corporate feeling like you're scrolling through facebook and you see an ad with like like a, a a cartoon lady with like a small head and big rounded arms and she's got like the pastel blues and purples and yellows on her and it's like oh yeah <laughs> i know you would love 25 percent on grubhub and it's like <laughs> it's like i'm sick of these fucking advertisements that's what the whole avatar system is it's just like that horrible super just rounded smooth edges no sanitized. grit to it sanitized yeah. look and just the last thing i want to mention in regards to the customization and how it's lacking we have all these different outfits which aren't that many but like it's an okay amount these outfits cannot be color changed like you're just mm -hmm. bound to the fucking outfit if i pick the outfit by the way it's full outfit right you don't get to choose your top and mix it with a bottom everything is so just pre-authored and basically that's why it feels so sanitized is because everything is so like must be done to facebook standards and we say you can only wear this outfit if it is black jeans and a black leather jacket, you cannot change the color of the leather on your jacket. You cannot change the color of your jeans. This black pant must go with this black jacket. <laughs> and that feels just, thanks for making me look what you think is dapper. Like I, 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 I could get with the style on some of these, but damn, fuck you for restricting me so much. And not just me, obviously, like you're restricting Matt over here. You're restricting all the people out there. I can understand the case of like, hey, we don't want like bananas or like weed plants, you know, like it's VR chat. Like we don't want these wild like iron giant avatars like walking around the place. But at the same time, it just feels so cynical. There is there's some sort of major corpo cynicism when you walk into the room filled with all these sanitized people. There, there's really like no reason I can see to to force everyone to adopt such like a specific realistic human form. Like it's actually unnerving to me as a player to have to like 
I have to use this avatar system where, like, I have big, expressive eyes and a very, like, pleasing mouth that, like, smiles in a pleasing way when I'm not fucking smiling. Like, it has a life of its own, A, right, that's, like, potentially communicating things I don't want it to communicate. Yeah, Everybody looks like Animojis. That's the thing I was yeah. trying to think of. I was like, I was like, they look so similar and they feel so familiar, but I don't know why. And then it's like, it's, it's the Apple Animojis where they use like your face camera to track your everything you're doing. And they try to translate that onto these like way too cartoony slash like doll like faces. And they did, they decided to take that and run with it in the VR space, not realizing yeah. just how kind of like, sort of unsettling it is and it's it's not only unsettling but like it just carves off a huge aspect of these sort of like semi-anonymous online spaces as like especially in vr which is like being able to choose your avatar it's not like picking a profile picture it's something much more like personal and intertwined with personal identity even setting aside cases of like people who have dysphoria right they like have some like deep set issue with their own body having to to select your form in vr it's like a weird personal psychological process and then like by restricting that not just to being very realistic but like even within realism restricting like what clothes you can wear like oh you know you can't have a uh, shitty hairstyle you have to have like one of these like cool like liberal west coast city approved i seen on tv hairstyle like, it, it's just like <laughs> yeah this is where we start becoming really like fucking like hard gop like conservative we well, we yeah, got I all don't, i don't mean to come no, across like like, 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 like there's it, like there's nothing bad there's nothing like bad about that like we're just we are just pointing out that like we can't actually express ourselves like Again, just to keep it jokey, right? Like, it feels like the whole wardrobe is like, oh, uh, why do I got to look like a soy boy? I want to put on my flannel and have my my big wrench or my, my Ford F-150 on my back. Like, like I, like, yeah, I don't no. I don't know. Like, obviously, I'm just like, I'm making a caricature of everyone. But it, it is absolutely a caricature in both ways. Like, yeah. that, that, I, that I must be this very sort of like metrosexual like almost like very ambiguous being yeah whereas like i am no like macho man randy savage like some sort of 80s icon of like masculinity i am not that nor do i wish to like make myself appear as that but i do want to like appear more like myself and the fact that i can only appear as like an animoji more or less like it it hurts us all the same Right. And it's interesting, you know, you mentioned this when we were, we were going through this together, but like they have, it's like a hearing, hearing device option. And oh like my a, God. A bendy option. And you can choose the color and, and like size of your hearing device. Right. Which like, cool. Yes. I have no issue with that. I think that's great that you're doing that. Yes. But combine that with like, you have to pick one of these 20 outfits and you can't even change the color or mix and match and why like, can know, i change the color of my fucking hearing aid and not my leather jacket why can't i wear sunglasses i don't want people to see where i'm looking why my, can't i mix and match all the parts of my outfit yeah <laughs> like what is going on anyways i take pride when i was creating my avatar I was like, screw this. I'm not buying into this system. I'm going to make the least human looking avatar I can. <laughs> so I made this like sort of fat, round faced, no hair, no eyebrows, like hyper pale, uh, wearing a like religious head covering. So, you you know, all my hair is, is covered uh, like sports jersey homunculus character I, I mean your character looks like it came out of the movie dune to some extent yeah. like <laughs> and i got multiple comments of people being like damn your avatar is really creepy and i was so proud of that <laughs> multiple people commented explicitly on that i was like yes i managed to escape the system yeah like if anything, you became like the most identifiable person in the room because everybody else was just so milk toast and yeah. the same. Like, 
but but like yeah honestly if we're talking about vr and like a hyper reality where like oh i can be anyone i can do anything let me be like an alien let me at least have like a weird color skin or like let me you know even better be like an anthropomorphic phone or something i guess like give me an expression if you really need that but like even i don't know ditch that like don't give people expressions that they don't actually have in real life unless you have the actual like data from their face to back it up yeah we should say here that the way people emote are like by giving various levels of thumbs up or thumbs down like that's part of what i liked about this experience was like speaking specifically on worlds is that when you give your thumbs up a like 3d thumbs up appears from your hand inside the world and that was cool when you do double thumbs up then a bunch of these like cute tennis ball sized open mouth smile faces like come out of your hands and also your own avatar's face like creates this big grin but if you like give a thumbs down or double thumbs down then your mouth goes from like big open smile immediately to like open mouth frown and your eyebrows like furl and things like that but there's no thumbs down emoji it's yeah Heck. oddly enough no thumbs down emoji just like youtube taking away the dislike counter bad emotions not allowed in this sanitized corporate space <laughs> yeah you're allowed to look displeased but you cannot project displeasure whereas joy or approval can be projected which feels very odd uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> very very odd also just being able to so easily switch between the emotions like looks very cartoony and sociopathic <laughs> like just flipping between like double thumbs up double thumbs down double thumbs up double thumbs up. and it, like it's i don't know it's it's weird it makes your character all the more spooky <laughs> but also like that that sort of stuff like you know it's going to be not abused but like co-opted and like ironized like this is just how socialization works when you have like a limited set of things just like people using emojis to mean not exactly you know like using the like joy like laughing crying face but like ironically at something that's not that funny like people are going to misuse these expressions yeah. and it's so like weird to have it tied into like the very Anim anime like big eyes like pleasant facial expressions nothing highlighted the weirdness of that more than when you were having technical issues like you were at first your microphone wasn't working and then you started like lagging and at one point like dropped out and you were trying to reconnect but your character was still in there your character was just like had this very like pleasant smile <laughs> eyes open sort of just like staring at people completely mutely like but like a, a very like you know like oh this is this is nice smile and it was so like creepy and like hard hard dump into uncanny valley you know <laughs> say what you will about the the concept of uncanny valley yeah. but like this fucking fit it meanwhile in real life i'm like swearing Cursing. up a storm <laughs> Anyways, yeah. so yes, the Avatar system is bad and sanitized, and we, we, yeah, we got into this because Venues is not well made, and that's one example of like going into the Avatar creation is just a bad UX. The Avatars itself, bad UX, and like bad concept, but that's not the only thing about Venues that's a poor user experience. Uh, one of the other things that stands out to me is this idea of like the rooms the instances where these live events or recorded events take place the various venues yeah yeah the instances have a capacity of like eight people and there's two problems with this the first is like people get locked out like there was a huge number of comments about you know so the, like the foo fighters at post super bowl thing was like widely advertised and so many people had trouble getting into an instance to watch it. That's just an example of like test the scalability of your software, like be able to support lots of people. But but another aspect of it is a like if you're trying to follow your friend around, your friend can go into a room that doesn't have enough space then for you. And that feels bad. And the other thing is the way that they communicate that you don't have any space in the in the thing that you're trying to travel to is this like tiny little notification on your wrist. But they do that when you move into the doorway 
they they have you travel by by teleporting into like a doorway area but if there's no space for you to travel for whatever technical reason you just sit there and you can you know you can't even like if you don't notice the notification then you're just sitting and the doorway is this flat card picture of the place you're trying to go to and now i'm just like sitting there in front of this pixelated flat texture confused what happened because i missed the notification nothing about this is like well tested a good user experience you know like they need designers it also feels odd to just like walk into a wall like at least with vr chat you see this kind of like weird magical portal and when you walk through it like then the loading happens here you just it's like oh this is platform nine and three quarters i'm harry potter let me run at this brick wall fast enough and maybe i'll load into the kazuna ai concert and that that's just so odd it's another example of this has already been done in other VR apps and it's trying to be like replicated here, but in in a worse, not even MVP way, right? It's like, oh, yeah. well, like virtual concert. Okay, it'll just be like a flat 180 dome video, right? Like, oh, edit avatar. Okay, no, a- no live mirror. Oh, teleporting through a doorway into another world. Okay, it's just a flat texture that like you teleport close up to in order to go there. It's it's like someone wrote a feature list, but the people actually implementing it didn't give a shit or didn't have the time or didn't understand what they were, you know, the overall vision of what was being trying to be achieved. And then no one was there to go, this isn't good enough, guys. We got to go back and we got to fix this. We, we We can't ship this. Yeah, one additional thing that I'm not sure if we touched on, but just to touch on community a little bit, like you're overhearing people all the time. People are speaking to people outside of VR. People are like doing some form of trolling. Like I know in in both like Horizons and in Worlds, I encountered multiple kids like squeaking about saying shit show over and over again as they zigzag across the plaza. Um, and then you have the people who just like straight up don't engage, right? Like you mentioned how, like I sort of disconnected and I was just standing there like, oh, everything's good. Everything's great. (laughs) Like there are those people that just like are hanging out in the venues as well. And I'm my immediate guess is like, oh, I guess they got fed up of the first two types of people I mentioned. So they just put everyone on mute and they're now enjoying a concert on their own with these like quiet bodies around them the entire time. There's a reason that movie theaters are not doing well in real life. And it's not because of COVID. It's because everyone got the opportunity to watch movies not in a theater. Because going to a theater sucks. You have all these loud people and you know, you have to travel to a place and it, I just want to watch it in the comfort of my home. You have parents bringing their kids to see the Batman only for the parents to then fucking snore through all three hours of the movie. It is no wonder that the community is annoying. Like you have this weird, undefined public space. Like, of course, it's going to be this sort of wild west. And like, You've like kids mixing with adults and there's no moderation and and the tools for for blocking and muting people are, well, they exist, but they're not amazing. The kid avatars don't even look like kids. I think that's something I forgot to mention way earlier on. We were talking about the avatar system. There are no kid avatars. So I just get this weird sensation when I am seeing the same age looking avatar from a guy who's speaking to me with like a very clear adult male voice and that near same exact avatar talking to me with a extremely high pitched clearly like third grader voice about right. uh, the, uh, uh, gosh i don't like that at all fucking slap some sort of wristband on them i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i mean it just speaks to the fact of like having everyone adopt these like weird realistic avatars sort of doesn't even achieve the purpose that they're trying to go for by making that choice. Because, like, you have this weird disconnect between the avatar and the person behind it. Just let them be pizzas and aliens and robots. If you want to make me look like a corporate sanitized pizza slice, go ahead. I don't care. Let me just have my fun, okay? Yeah. (laughs) Anyways, as, as the final 
nail in in the coffin uh talking about venues i just want to point out that they haven't even really integrated with the party and like destination api that oculus has like you can join up with your friends in an oculus party outside of the app right and you can have voice chat and you can travel to games together but you can't travel to a destination in venues together you have to separately load into the venues app and then within the venues menu you have to invite people or or party up separately or, or join the space that a friend is already in and that's just like completely against the concept of the metaverse that facebook is trying to push to to, to begin with so i think the the two star rating you know 50 percent of the reviews are one star on the oculus store for for horizon venues i think that's well warranted and i don't think that this is a they're doomed to continue being doomed story. I think a lot of the stuff we've mentioned on this episode can be addressed, but just with everything we've said and sort of the recurring visionary not being present, that is going to be one of the key components to actually getting it to that point is getting someone with an actual vision and having that person like have enough wits about them in order to get that vision into play while also rallying everybody around them to understand that vision and like feed into that vision more. Cause it's not going to just be like some VR Hideo Kojima that makes like all of this correct. It's going to take an entire team of people who are passionate about making hyper concerts or hyper entertainment to bring venues to where it wants to present itself in commercials. If you liked this episode of Head Mounted Destinations, please share it with your friends. Word of mouth really helps us out. Uh, you can get notified about new episodes by signing up for our email list. You can go to headmountedpodcast.com to do that. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Mounted Head. You can also listen to the show on Spotify, Stitcher, or Apple Podcasts, as well as watch it on YouTube. Thanks for listening to this episode, and we'll see you at the next Head Mounted Destination.